now we've got uh, two and a half knots of wind. Isn't that great? That's just embarrassing. How long could we go on just fuel if we didn't get any more wind? Well, we could go about another six, seven days before we run out of fuel. Really? So basically we could go the whole way. We, can, we have gone the whole way motor. Yeah. <laughs> Except the first day. Yeah. Wind's supposed to pick up tomorrow though, so. What oh, is? Wind. So hopefully we'll be able to sail for a day and then motor the last two. Excellent. Four days into our nine day Indian Ocean crossing and we've had to motor just about the entire time. But the good thing about it is that it's super calm and relaxing. I can cook without fear of things rolling off the stove and no one is seasick. However, in an effort to conserve fuel for motoring, we don't run the air conditioners. So we took an opportunity on this unbelievably calm day to cool off in the water. Okay, so we stopped the boat and now we're gonna go swim. All right, go Kate. Oh, we were still oh my gosh, it's hot. I know. I don't know, but it's hot on my feet. Go, go. Very few things are as cool as swimming in the open ocean when it's calm and it's super hot out. Have we hit the equator yet? No. Two degrees above it. Two degrees above the equator. It's hard to tell where the sky stops and the ocean starts. I think that's a line in Forrest Gump, isn't it? <laughs> it feels weird being out here without my mask. I'm afraid it's a great, great white just gonna come up. Here. <laughs> I don't say that. It's not funny. So I'm doing the prep work since we're on passage. I ain't got nothing else to do for the install of the ZF Marine controller. Sweet. And I ordered a backup controller, so if I ever have a problem, I've got a backup. They're two different controllers and they're two different mountings. Huh. So the old controller over there, the Cobalt controllers, they cut a huge hole in that the, the fiberglass over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something kind of smart because these are all plug and play. I'm going to take this wonderboard here and I'm going to cut up the footprint that covers that hole then inside of it I'm going to cut the hole because this has a bigger that this fits into that hole's bigger for that one and then I'm going to make another smaller plate that fits over the top of that plate that this mounts to so if I ever got to change this out I just pull this out pull that top plate off oh my goodness. and this one bolts right back down in there wow. so it's yeah. auto, it's it's plug and play it's a plug and play baby can you say plug and play one more time? And, and this one needs to be up just a little bit anyway, above the surface, because when these are all the way down, they could touch my gauges up there, so that's going to, this quarter inch uh, wonder board's going to work out perfect for that. control goes bad, you pop it off, of course it would be mounted onto that thing. Yeah, I get it. This stays on, this comes out, Look at that. That one goes in the and, then, and the spare control comes out, put it on, plug it in. Put it on, plug it in. That one never comes off, that plate. We got a fish. We got a fish and it's been so long it's since we've days. got a fish. Yeah, it's a Dorado. Awesome. Yeah. Then idling the boat back. We got a Dorado, guys. Let's go. Day five. We finally got a bite. Woo. I haven't seen the green Dorado in a long time. No kidding, we got fish. So it's day five and we still don't have any wind. A little bit more than the last couple of days, but not enough to turn the motors off. We've got to uh, we got both mainsail and jib out because we have a little bit of wind. I think uh, seven knots of wind. All 
a Dorado in so long. It's been ages. Yeah. Finally got one. nights left. We do? Yeah. Sweet. So, so I know so Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night. It should be there Tuesday sometime. Cool. So I know a lot of people are going to ask, why aren't you tacking? Why are we motoring the entire way direct to destination? Well, that's a good question. And here is the answer to that. This particular passage is kind of tricky because there's a low pressure system spinning clockwise down there below the equator. That's causing the winds to be right on our nose. If you looked at predict wind and you looked at the video, but we've we've been right into light winds generated by this by this low uh, tropical low down there south of the equator. Now the move would be to make a southerly tack and go down south of the Seychelles if those winds held and then tack back up into the Seychelles. That would be the right sailing move. But as the low moves west, those winds shift, and then you'd be the winds would actually be on your nose as you were south of the Seychelles. So that's not a good plan uh, for tacking out here. Number two, my rule of thumb on tacking and, and sailing is if, if I don't have enough wind to truly sail this boat, then I'm going to motor direct to the destination. Uh, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And, and if you've got a motor at all, motor directly to that destination or motor to a better, you know, maybe an edge out uh, a little higher wind angle. But the only other option here would have been to uh, just lay back for the next two or three days, just shut the engines off, pull the sails down, and just sit out here on the water for two or three days, let the current take us west at one and a half knots. And then when the winds pick up on Thursday and Friday of next week, then grab those winds and, and drop right into the Seychelles. And then you can truly sail down there. But I'm not one to sit around and wait. I want to get to my destination. When we get to the end of this passage, this will probably be the lowest fuel we've been on because we've had to motor the entire passage except the first day. And I, you know, I really picked a bad weather window. It's very odd that I picked one. It wasn't a bad weather window. It was just a no wind weather window. And I should have. I was at the last day. I was thinking about waiting a week, and I should have probably waited a week. But then I'd have just been sitting in Mali and in, in Hula Mali Harbor. Uh, so I mean, I'm actually doing something besides just sitting around waiting on something. So. How's our buddy boats 
So they're all behind us, and, and they are uh, they are doing well. I took a I took a longer. I went out west farther than they did because uh, I, I knew this wind was going to be like this, and I wanted to be on the as far out as I could, as high of an angle as I could on the wind. And uh, you know, it's not helped me a lot, but I think it's helped me quite a bit. And uh, they're struggling, you know, I think they're having some struggles over there trying to find, because they want to sell. They want to use their sales and, 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 and to conserve diesel, and I totally get that. Uh, especially when we got to go pay $1.53 a liter in the mall in, in the Seychelles. It's going to cost about 2000 bucks to fill the boat up in the Seychelles, so that's, that's going to be an ouchie. That's an ouchie. That's an ouchie, Apple. So are they going to make it? Do they have enough fuel? They have enough fuel. They can motor direct. Everybody's got about three or four days left. They've got about four days left. We have three, three nights left. As you can see from this screen, what little wind we have is basically right on our nose, which isn't good for sailing. We run one engine at a time, alternating every 24 hours. And right now we're going 6.7 knots speed over ground with one engine and 8.8 .8 knots of true wind. And we have about 70 hours and 477 miles left to go. So, I don't think you can tell. In fact, I know you can't tell, but out there somewhere is a ship. Okay, so here's a few fishing buoys, but uh, no. That's a Claudia. Claudia's headed our way. Wait, let's go back to Claudia. Let's see what Claudia is. Claudia is. Uh, 10 meters, that's it. So it's kind of a small boat. That's kind of scary. Oh, you might be able to see it now. It's right there on the horizon. Look at the beautiful sunset. And my beautiful boys up there chatting away. What do you think? Nothing to be concerned about? No. Why do you think it's nothing to be concerned about? We are near yes, Somalia. The name of that, that skiff, that fishing skiff, is Amula, and all these fishing buoys out here are Amula as well. Oh. Uh, so they're just coming out to check on their fishing buoys? Yeah, there's probably a big processing plant to ship out here somewhere. And all these guys run their long lines off of that, and they just monitor their long lines, and then they take their stuff to the big, big ship somewhere. Huh. Cool. Okay, so the fishing boat was not really a problem. They basically stayed where they're at. We've moved along. They must be um, just staying out there by those fishing buoys. I was a little nervous when we started this um, passage out because we're kind of in the vicinity of Somalia and dangerous territory, but we're so far offshore, like a thousand miles or more, that it's not not really an issue. However, I think on our way back, I, I think we're gonna stay in the Seychelles for about a month and then go over to Africa and spend, I don't know how long in Africa, several months maybe. Um, and then depending on COVID and, and whatever, we'll probably come back up the way we just came, but go through the Red Sea and uh, the Suez Canal and go back to the Mediterranean. So we thought about going to Madagascar and South Africa and we'd like to do that, but South Africa seems kind of, um, it's got some uh, rough seas and it's cold. And so we're not really excited about going down there. I think there's a little bit of political unrest as well. So who knows what will happen by then, but that's kind of our plan after Africa. Um, so tonight it's beautiful. We, I have got stars out. I can't show them to you, but uh, the moon is red. I'll try to show it to you, but you're probably not going to see it but it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, night shifts will start soon. Another another day marked off of the um, passage chart. And guess what? We uh, passed the equator again. So we didn't stop 
do anything because we swam just the other day. So, but anyway, we've only got uh, just under 400 miles to go. 54 hours left. So a little over two days. Excited. Wow, you can really see the minute. It was red earlier. Now it's just bright and beautiful and big. So just after I'm telling you the threat of pirates is yesterday's news, we got visitors first thing Sunday morning. Sri Lankan fishermen, you know, you're out in the middle of the ocean, and these guys are hundreds of miles, three, four, five hundred miles in a little boat like that out here on the ocean. And so you don't know, and in Somalia is just six, seven hundred miles that way. So you're out here and you're like, are these Somalian fishermen? And if they're Somalian fishermen, are they kind of... I thought you said we're a thousand miles off of the Somalia. Uh, well, yeah, a thousand, eight hundred, six hundred, it's, <laughs> it's all relative right now. Okay. Feels like we're two hundred miles away. <laughs> Feels like we're just 200 miles away from Somalia. Uh -huh. But anyway, th those were Sri Lankan fishermen. They're a long way from their home ground. Yeah, they are. But there must be, they're fishing for tuna out here on long lines. And there must be a big processing boat out here somewhere where they take all their fish back to the processing boat and they just live out here on these boats for days on end. Huh. Well, anyway, uh, it sure is unnerving. Yeah. The next couple of days were quite uneventful. With little to no wind, we continued to motor sail direct to our destination. Bright sunny days, blue skies, and calm seas made the passage extremely easy, although very expensive when we get ready to fuel up. Catamaran, uh, private catamaran. Just take that little 
Tune in next week for more adventures. Okay, tune in next week for more adventures.